Hey, everyone, it's our family. Welcome to our time of prayer for Wednesday, March 30th. We begin our time of prayer with a sympathy to the family of Toby Bradley, who died suddenly on Monday. Please remember Trish and Olivia and lift them up uh, as they make their preparations. George Banks is still at White Oaks doing rehab along with others. And uh, Dale Godfrey had back surgery and uh, on Monday and is doing well. Uh, Marlene Holcomb had cataract surgery today and is doing well. And then lift up Maurice Pace. He did have results of his test. He'll be having a bronchoscopy and biopsy on Tuesday, April 4th. New to our friends of Morningside are, is Charlie Bell. This is Shirley Bodner's cousin. She said he lost his peripheral vision due to diabetes. So remember Charlie? Myra Wood is the sister of Mario Gillespie. She has breast cancer and taking treatments, and she asked for us to pray for her. Then Crew Allison, who's a three-year-old child in our preschool here at Morningside, had some breathing issues and was taken to the hospital. They gave him some medications, and he seems to be doing much, much better. Pray for our college students and military families. College students are pretty much wrapping it up in April, uh, getting ready for finals. Pray for our military families as they continue to serve our country. Especially pray for those families as spouses are apart from one another and families are apart and just lift them up in your prayers. Pray for those who are fleeing the Ukraine and those who are taking in the refugees, hundreds of thousands of them now in Poland. We have our contact there. Uh, Pastor Gustav is working tirelessly along with Daniel and Anka Rus, who have a ministry there in Poland. Uh, we keep in touch with them by Facebook, and they keep sending us messages of thanking us for our contributions and gifts that members have already given. And just remember those during this time. A lot of uh, changes in the world right now. Pray for Pastor Stephen as he gives us tonight our final devotion in the series that we've been going through, G Seeking Jesus Through Forgiveness. Pray for unspoken requests and pray for those in our community. Let's pray together, shall we? Father God, it's good to be in this place. Good to be in the house of the Lord where we can lift up those who we love so much, especially asking you to wrap your arms of love and peace around the Bradley family for Trish and Olivia and other family members. Lord, as they uh, have had to say goodbye to Toby and just pray for that family. We pray for Maurice Pace and for this upcoming bronchoscopy and biopsy, Lord, for more results of those tests. Thank you for the good news with Dale Godfrey and Marlene Holcomb in their procedures and surgery. Especially lift up a little crew and pray that he'll continue to get better with uh, these breathing treatments. For Myra Wood, Lord, as we continue to pray for her and for the treatments she's having for her cancer. And pray for Charlie Bell and Shirley and their family, Father, as he makes adjustments in his life now. Lord, with this loss of peripheral vision and a new way of life for him. We want to pray for our college students and military families. As we said, uh, all of them are going through changes in their life right now, especially for our college students as some of them are finishing up uh, here in just a few weeks for military families that are together and those that are apart, we lift them up and thank you for their sacrifice and their service. We definitely pray, pray for those in the Ukraine and for uh, those in Poland who are, who are Christians and missionaries, taking them into their homes and their churches and the seminary there in Warsaw, everyone seeking to help them as much as possible. And then we pray for Pastor Stephen as he gives us this message on his final uh, devotion of the series Seeking Jesus Through Forgiveness. We thank you for Pastor Stephen's study time and his presentation and his heart, Lord, as he reaches out to those in our church family through his counseling ministry uh, that deal with uh, not being able to forgive. And if you're feeling that right now, we just pray that you would just let us know and talk to us about that. And we want to reach out to you as well as we reach out to others in our community. And for those unspoken requests, Lord, we just lift them up to you also. It's in Jesus' name we give thanks for all these things. Amen. Thank you, church family. God bless you and have a good week.
Thank you for joining us this Wednesday. Today our hymn is Living for Jesus. Stephen, and this is your Bible study for the week of March the 30th. As we come to this week, we've come to the end of our series on forgiveness. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, there's no way there's anything else to talk about. But we do have at least one more topic that we want to discuss. But before we do that, let's just think back about all of the things that we have learned uh, when it comes to forgiveness. First, let's remember that we all need forgiveness from God, and we need to be forgiving to others since God in Christ has forgiven us. That's that key verse we talked about, Ephesians 4, 32. And even though God has eternally and judicially forgiven us, meaning that he has said, you are forgiven and we will not go to hell, we will be able to spend time in heaven uh, for all of eternity, we still have a need right here, right now, in the situations that we are in to be able to have a relational forgiveness, both with God and with others. Uh, the relationship needs to be restored and rebuilt. Forgiveness is something that is modeled after God's practice of forgiveness. And in fact, when we look to the Old Testament and to the New Testament, we see that God when he forgives, promises not to hold someone's sin against them anymore. And that promise is a promise to not bring up that sin anymore to ourself, anymore to them, anymore to others, or to God. It's a promise that when we are making it is one that is to let that sin be something that is not in our minds anymore. We choose to, uh, to uh, not remember it. Then forgiveness, when we've talked about it, is sort of like a bulldozer. It clears away all of the rubble of a relationship that is broken, and it allows us to have a level ground to be able to start the process of restoration of that relationship. And 
the idea of restoration uh, in a relationship is a lot uh, like two cranes that are coming together to build a new and a better relationship, and that's what we call reconciliation. When someone has broken a relationship with someone else, uh, the right way for us to pursue that is to seek forgiveness. And we do that by going to that person and gently rebuking them uh, because of what they may have done uh, to hurt our feelings or uh, to do some sort of sin against us. And then we want to listen to hear if they are going to repent. And if they repent, then we forgive them no matter how many times we have to repeat that process in a single day. But then also we might realize that we're the ones who have sinned against someone else. And the process to seek forgiveness in that situation is similar. We should stop everything and go immediately to that other person uh, with a humble heart. We should genuinely repent, asking that they forgive us for what we have done that is wrong. And we should do everything we can to work towards reconciliation, which may include some sort of restitution or some sort of consequences uh, that we would have to be willing to pay. There are some special cases when we might be able to overlook the offense of another person, but we should always pray and seek God's help to forgive others. And we should ask for help from other spiritual believers when it doesn't seem like we can uh, be able to restore our relationships. We should never, ever, ever settle for unreconciled, unforgiven relationships. Now, that all being said, you might be again thinking, well, what else is left? But as we conclude, we want to think briefly about the relationship between love and forgiveness. Remember, in all that we just talked about, we model our forgiveness of others on God's forgiveness of us. And when we are thinking particularly about the way that we model our life after God's, 1 John 3.16 tells us that when we love others, we abide in God's love. It tells us God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So there is some sort of relationship, if we look at that verse, and we understand that we are modeling our love after God. And we're modeling our forgiveness after God. There's some sort of relationship that must exist between forgiveness and love because both of them are characteristic of God. But how are they connected? Well, if you look back to the Old Testament and just try to find those two words, love and forgiveness, in verses in the Old Testament, you'll be surprised because there's a lot of verses that talk about love and forgiveness in the same breath. Exodus 34, 7 uh, tells us that God maintains faithful love to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. Did you hear it? Faithful love and forgiving. When we look at Numbers 14, 18 through 19, that idea is repeated, and it tells us the Lord is slow to anger, he is abounding in faithful love, forgiving iniquity and rebellion. In both of these places, God says that he will not let sin go unpunished, which is the reason that Jesus came and he took the consequence for sin on himself because we deserve to be punished, but Jesus was punished in our place. And with that in mind, God can forgive us because the debt has been paid. The penalty has already been placed on Jesus. That is one of the reasons when we read in Nehemiah that he is praising God in 917, saying, but you're a forgiving God, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in faithful love, and you did not abandon them. Nehemiah is talking about his ancestors in the past. And Psalm 86.5 also reminds us of the reasons that we should praise God, saying, For you, Lord, are kind and ready to forgive, abounding in faithful love to all who call on you. Micah as well says, Who is a God like you? Forgiving iniquity and passing over rebellion for the remnant of his inheritance, he does not hold on to his anger forever because he delights in faithful love. You see in these Old Testament passages that there's a relationship 
that somehow forgiveness and faithful, steadfast love, they are there as partners, if we want to call them that, in what it means for God to act and characterizes his actions towards us. But we want to be careful because love and forgiveness are not the same thing. To genuinely forgive, it seems to, looking at all these passages, that we must have love for that other person. So forgiveness would be called rightly an expression of our love for others. Now think about love as we understand it in the Bible. And maybe the most famous verse that has ever been uh, memorized or thought about is John 3.16. And it tells us, God so loved the world that he gave. Giving is also an expression of love. Love is not merely a feeling that is internal and private to us. Love is an action that is external, that is an expression of what is on the inside. Giving is one way to express love. But seeking forgiveness and granting forgiveness are just as valid a way to express love. Jesus had an interchange with the Pharisee named Simon in Luke chapter 7. And it is in the context there where a woman who loved Jesus came at the expense of her own humiliation. And she broke open an expensive flask and anointed his feet and she washed his feet with her tears. She was repenting in this whole picture of her, the sin that was in her life. And she was surrendering herself to the Lord. The Pharisee was livid at this. And he knew that this woman was a known sinner. And he said into himself that she'd come into his home and, and he had just fellowship with her. He had, he had let her lay at his feet and, and do this horrible display. But Jesus knew these thoughts. And so he used the example of a moneylender and two people who had debts. And he made plain the relationship between love and forgiveness. He said there were two debtors, one who owed a little and the other who owed a lot. Both debts, though, were forgiven by the moneylender. And Jesus asked, who would love that moneylender more, the one who had a little debt or the one who had a big debt? And the Pharisee answered him, well, of course, it's the one who had the big debt. And with a little bit more explanation, Jesus comes to the principle, the one that we want to remember about love and forgiveness, the relationship that is there. And he says, he who is forgiven little, in verse 47, loves little. That's the relationship between love and forgiveness. The greater the love, the greater the forgiveness and the willingness to forgive. And that's why this is the last topic we're going to talk about. And it's also why it's so important for us to understand this topic. Because when we look at the greatest commandment that has ever been issued, it is one that tells us we are to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we are to love others as ourselves. If we truly love God, then we will be willing not only to seek forgiveness from him, but because God is always good and he never sins against us, we don't have to worry about forgiving him, but we should give ourselves to him. Our lives and our service and our all, we should give to him. We should seek his forgiveness and give ourselves to him. That's the way that we express our love for God. But don't forget the second part of that great great commandment. If we love others, then we should be willing to express to them that love for them in two very connected ways. We should be willing to seek forgiveness when we've done wrong, and we should be willing to grant forgiveness when others have wronged us. Forgiveness is one way that we express our love it's one way that we seek Jesus as our Savior, serve Christ as our Lord, and share Christian love with others. And friends, that's my prayer for us, that as we continue to find ways to seek forgiveness and grant forgiveness, 
that we would be following the example and the Lord Jesus in everything that we do. Thank you so much for listening, and God bless you.